What is that noise? What is that noise? Oh my goodness, the, the glue must have melted. Oh my god. You can see where the glue's, this is all glue yeah, melting. Yeah, but I've had this off before, haven't I? I've rubbed it all Well, you know what, this, this, was a, this was a cheap paddle board. This was like 200 and something pounds. It wasn't a lot of money and it's lasted pretty well. And it's been living out in the sun. But that's what the sun does, yeah, look. gosh. I mean, I don't know if can we can replace the repair that. I just that. used the super glue as well. I've just used the last of it. Oh, I don't think the super glue will work. Oh dear. It's funny how it's done it there. Maybe this has got yeah. very hot. It, you can feel how hot it is though. Yeah. We'll just stand here. <laughs> I reckon that the black's got very hot in the sun and it's melted the glue more there. Yeah. In getting ready for our sail to the Bahamas, we needed some diesel to fill up our tanks. And as there is no fuel dock in Samana, Louis and his team come out with drums by boat to fill you up. You think the reason why it's so flat, Louis, the, the water, yeah. is it's because... It's because there is and also too much garbage, you know. Yeah. Too much, too much pollution in the water, you know. Yeah. And people they not, they really confused about the ocean, you know. Yeah. People like throw like glass, you know, plastic, and we destroy the ocean ourselves, you know, because a lot of things going, you know, in the water were not supposed to go. Yeah. Yeah. And by the end, we're not gonna have no fish. No. We're not gonna have no fish because when the the, the, the temperature change. For well, the water, you know, the fish move. Right. And sometimes the fishermen, they think they're there, they're not there, they are someplace else. Because yeah. They migrate. We noticed a lot of rubbish over in the national park. I've it's been, loads of it. I've been talking about this for a long time. Yeah. But people here, you tell it this, and they come to this here, and go to this to, one. Yeah. You're not breathing any of that in, are you? No, Mary? because I. Ow. Did you put it oh, in? Oh, shit, no, no, I put a shout. I just put an A in. Are you just putting it in? Hey, not no, no, no. Okay. No. Louis, you can speak French? Yeah. English? Spanish? Yeah. What else? Nothing, I'm Italian a little bit. And you're just a hub of information. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what we'd have done without Louis' services whilst in the Dominican Republic. He was lots of fun, super helpful, the sweetest guy, and he will definitely be missed. James and I set sail on our passage to the Bahamas. We visited the Marina Puerto Bahia for a day poolside to soak up the beautiful coast and mountain views and to also soak up a few rum cocktails or maybe a few more were had. I just know that a few rum cocktails always helps with the journey home on the tender. This is a stunning resort hotel and marina which is the perfect place to bring the whole family. And we were also told that it's a celebrity holiday hotspot. And if you're lucky enough, you might just see J-Lo.
us that draw absolutely nothing. So we've been told it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And number eight. What's that guy doing? Number eight is where we can go through. What's he doing? I don't know what he's saying. Is he gonna jump? He's not gonna jump. he was going to jump. So we slowed down the tender, waited and checked that he was okay. Good morning. We are just about to leave um, Samana in Dominican Republic. Uh, we only really came here for a, a couple of nights and we've ended up staying, I think, four or five days. Um, it's been really, really beautiful. And Louis, um, the guy we've been dealing with here, he's been so helpful. Like, everything we've wanted, he's, he's sorted out for us. So we're just uh, picking up the hook now and then we're going to do a two night sail um, to the Bahamas. Admiral. Reporting in for duty. <laughs> Do you want me to come forward a little bit on the anchor or? Okay. I'll come around a little bit. Who's that? Is it someone else's anchor? Oh my gosh. Whose anchor though? Well, I don't know, it must be an old anchor. Oh, actually, it's attached to something. Hmm. Just push it off, just push it off. Yeah, I don't think we'll be able to push Please, it off. Let me, I'll push it off. Yeah, I don't think it well, depends if it's attached to anything. Okay, it's twisting at the moment, that's good. It's gone through, uh, it's gone through. It's, it's, no, it hasn't gone through. It has, it's gone through the whole thing. No, it hasn't, has it? No, I don't think so. That's it, that's it, that's it. Try, yeah, try and pull that that way, yeah, that's it. Almost. That's it. Oh yay! Right, you okay? Ooh. Okay. Woo. Um any problem is. That's it. Okay. Oh, wonder what else Woo. we're gonna catch today. Oh, hope a few fish. <laughs> is it dirty? No. Oh okay. Lovely. You think pulling up an anchor takes seconds, but it actually doesn't. It takes a lot longer than that, especially when you've got sort of 70 meters of chain out. Um, it can take quite a long time. So if you're in a hurry to leave somewhere, you have to leave a good hour to get everything ready. Um, James and I got everything ready mostly yesterday, but I think after being quite seasick, uh, on the last journey from Bonaire to Dominican Republic. We're super prepared this time. So I've made a bake, I've made some sandwiches, I've made some salad. Um, we've even put a little bin up here so we don't have to go downstairs. It's just all these little tiny things that we've uh, put together. And maybe we'll do a video on that and what we, what we do, or what we've done, should I say, and what we should do. <laughs> um, but yeah, we feel a little bit more prepared this morning, which is great. And hopefully today, please God, no seasickness. We've got a little bit of rain to see us off today. I'm hoping that cloud is going to pass in that direction. Look at that beautiful channel there where the sun is coming through the clouds. It's stunning. Yeah! You're going where? Oh, okay, we're going to Matthew Town. 
Yeah. Have a good journey. Rescues. Oh, <laughs> oh, thank goodness, I'd have been so upset if I'd lost that. <laughs> What's happened, Ruth? So we're just going past the northwest tip of uh, Dominican Republic now, and we're sailing with just the jib. Um, earlier, well, as we pulled out of uh, Samana, we noticed that the, the halyard was loose. It was sort of dangling around and I pulled it and there was nothing there. Basically, it snapped. So let me show you. So this is the mainsail halyard. And to me, it looks like where it's been spliced, um, something's happened and it's, it's, it's snapped. Um, now, we've got in mast furling. Um, so the sail's not going to come down, it's wrapped around the furler. But if we were to pull the sail out, then the sail would just fall down and it would be a major problem. Um, obviously it was only a few weeks ago that I was with James and we fitted this new mainsail and we actually did check the halyard to make sure there was no wear on it. Um, and there wasn't. But we did notice um, a few days ago that the, um, the bottom of the sail was very loose, like the last sort of foot of the sail was, was quite baggy. And we tightened the halyard to um, sort of lift the sail a little bit to tighten that up. Um, and the halyard did feel very, very tight. So I'm thinking I've probably over tightened it. And um, that's happened as a result of that. But I don't really know what else I'm gonna do to get the, to get the sail looking how it should, to get it tight. Um, so I'm probably going to have to speak to a rigger or, or get someone to look at that with a bit more knowledge than me and, and find out what's gone wrong. But the issue is at the moment we can't use the mainsail so we're just sailing with the jib. Um, we've got a Code Zero and we've also got a cruising chute so I'm going to get the cruising chute out uh, ready um, and if the wind gets to a sort of state where we think we can fly it safely then we'll, uh, then we'll fly the cruising chute. But we're doing about five knots at the moment which um, which is okay, but it's not great. At this rate, we may not do it in two nights. We may uh, uh, arrive on night three, but um, we'll see. We took out the cruising chute and prepared her in case we used her for sailing. We store her in the forward cabin, which is particularly roomy and we tend to store rather a lot of other stuff in there too, which is very convenient. We were just about to put the cruising chute up and sod's law, the wind's picked up to 18 um, and it's gone up from sort of 14 to 18 in the last 20 minutes and I think it's just not advisable to put it out. When it gets too windy, it can just become overpowered. So we're going to put the jib back out, put the other bits away and we've got the cruising chute out anyway, just in case the wind does drop a bit um, and then it'll be safer to fly there. Downward wind 
Um, we've got about 12 knots at the minute, which is perfect. And the sea's pushing us as well. So all in all, it's a beautiful sail. We're doing about an extra one knot. We were doing about 5.5. We're now doing about 6.7 on average, which is great because it makes a difference between getting somewhere in the morning and getting somewhere in the evening. So let's hope this continues. If it picks up much more wind, let's say 17, we might have to bring it in, but anything sort of between 12 to 15 is good, or 10 to 15 is great. And there she is. Beautiful sail. Oh dear, our poorly board, look at that. What a sight for sore eyes. Oh. You've been very good to us though. We're gonna try and resurrect you, but I'm not sure it's possible. Sorry, board. All we seem to be getting is seagrass, otherwise known as sargasm on the end of our fishing rod. It's very annoying. We've changed layers a few times to see if that makes any difference. And we have a really amazing moment. James and I are like, yes, we've got a fish, we've got a fish. And then only to realize that there's a whole heap of sargasm on the end of it. And then you put it back out and then there's more sargasm on the end of it. So we need to catch some fish someday. This just isn't good. It's very embarrassing. There you can see the true wind speed, so it's around 11 at the minute. And then the speed we're doing is around averaging sort of 6.5. Oh, we're getting up to 7.2, woohoo! We were sailing with the cruising chute beautifully. We were cruising, snoozing, and surfing the waves. So we're pretty much running straight downwind at the moment. We've got about nine knots of wind and we're doing about six knots. Pretty good. So we went to furl in the um, cruising chute and nothing happened, like nothing happened. It didn't furl, the torsion table just twisted and twisted and twisted and nothing happened and then it snapped. So we had full cruising chute up, the winds were picking up um, and it was, it was panic for a little while. Basically we lowered it We've had to cut it from the front. It's now, it's still attached to the boat, but the whole sail is in the water. So we're going to try and recover it. Be careful the water's going to But be. look, the rope's fucked as well. Oh my okay. God. Put it back up, put it back up. No, So I've calmed down a little bit now, but that was fairly hairy. Um, we managed to recover the sail. 
Um, we had to drop it in the water um, and we managed to retrieve it from the stern of the boat. Um, so that was good. There is a rip in the sail, unfortunately, um, but it's only a small one. And to be honest, when we couldn't furl it, um, I thought we were in serious trouble. I mean, we're probably 40 or 50 miles offshore. Um, the wind was starting to pick up. You know, we started to furl it um, when the wind hit around 15 knots, because the wind was around sort of 10, 12, 14 knots, and it went up to 15. We thought, right, we'll put it away and we were just furling and furling and furling and nothing was happening the the, the anti-torsion rope was twisting as it as it should but nothing was happening it was just twisting and twisting and twisting and when i bought the sail um i did query with them when i used it the first time i said look the the anti-torsion rope seems very thin and when you go to furl it it twists for ages before it actually furls and uh, they said yeah that's that's how it's meant to be um but I don't know, I'm not an expert, but I don't think it is gonna be like that. Um, we've got a Code Zero, which um, also has an anti-torsion rope in it. Um, and when you furl that, it furls straight away. Um, there's no twisting or anything like that. You, you, you start furling and, it, and the, the sail furls. Um, and it's really disconcerting when you're trying to put a sail away and, and you're, you're, you're furling and nothing's happening, especially when the wind's picking up. And that's a really big sail. That's what, big for our boat. You know, that's I think it's about 200 and something square meters. I think it's 210 square meters. Um, so you know, it's quite a handful if the wind starts to pick up. Um, but what we actually did in the end, we um, lowered the halyard. Um, we sort of po pointed the boat um, almost downwind. The wind was just off the bow, um, or, or blowing just off the bow rather. And um, yeah, we, we lowered the halyard slowly. We um, pulled in a little bit on the, um, on the sheet and lowered it, lowered it, lowered it. And then I tied a rope um, to the um, clue and then I cut the Dyneema line and then it went into the water and it just floated back. Um, and then we were able to retrieve it. I got us a beer to calm our nerves after all the drama and we sailed with our trusty jib literally into the eye of the sunset. So it's 3am in the morning, um, I'm just on my night shift, Philippa's uh, asleep upstairs. Um, the wind's dropped off a little bit so we're seeing about 15 to 16 knots of wind now. Um, and we're still doing around six knots six and a half knots with just the jib out so we've only got the jib out um, and our ETA is around two o'clock so um, yeah we're, we're doing okay good morning everyone this is Saturday morning this is hopefully our last day today of sailing we've managed with just the jib we're pretty much the most of the way here obviously as you know the mainsail broke just as we left Samana Bay in Dominican Republic. We're doing about 4.5 knots at the minute. We should get there about, I would say, four o'clock this afternoon. Let's see. That's if the wind doesn't die down on us. Um, James is asleep. He let me sleep till about 5.30 this morning. So I've had about five and a half hours sleep, which was really nice. I did the first shift, he did the second shift, and I'm doing this shift now. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to getting there now and uh, we need to plan to try and get everything fixed it's gone wrong on the boat on this sail but they will get fixed as they always do so yeah all in all it's been a good sail apart from the disasters we've had we're here in one piece though and we live to tell a tale there's james asleep there when i think about yesterday i put up the blanket so that he's got some shade from the sunshine Next time aboard Equus. We check into the Bahamas and meet George, the harbour master. 
we climb the old British built lighthouse in Matthew Town and we anchor in a remote coral atoll in the Atlantic. <laughs> 